Hi friends, it's Taylor. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are planning for my first sinking funds ever and I'm going to show you all how I want to do that using Google Sheets and Monarch Money. We're going to start here in Google Sheets and this is my yearly goals template which is fairly simple and we will go over it now. So I do want to say that I have only put four columns here because I wanted to have the four alternating colors which are present in my other templates. And if you all want to use this for years after 2027, then you would just copy and paste all of the columns to the right of this document and that should reduce the amount of work that you have to do. So we have this overview section here and then all of the years over here and down here I have my goals which are broken up into each quarter and this is specifically for my financial goals. So within the overview section I have three subcategories my net worth, which is going to be specific numbers associated with my wealth. So that's going to be the amount of debt that I have. My net worth, which is my assets minus my liabilities. And then my credit score. Then I have investments. I currently only have two different types, which is my brokerage, that's my Acorns, and my 401k, which is on pause, but it resumes in February, so I'm excited for that. And then we have my sinking funds, which is going to be the focus of this video. And I have my categories here, and then the total amount that I can save per month. So this cell here is going to be used as the baseline for calculating all of my contributions. And then whatever is left is what I'm going to be using to apply to my debt. So under each year, I have three different columns. The start column is going to be whatever number I'm starting with at the beginning of the year. I will update these numbers on January 1st, but I'm using my numbers as of today so that we have some numbers to work with. Then I have the goal column, which is whatever number I want to achieve by the end of that year based on my starting point. So for example, my emergency fund is at $1,000 right now and I want to get to 2200 in my emergency fund. So I would not put 1200 here, I would put 2200 because that is the total amount that I want to have by December 31st. And then I have monthly, which is a formula-based column that takes the difference between your start point and your goal and divides it by 12 into equal monthly numbers. And those numbers can be what you need to contribute, so that would be for investments or savings. It could be something you need to pay, i.e. my debt, or it could be progress. So for my net worth, I need to increase my net worth by a little over $1,000 if I want to reach this goal by the end of the year. Now, some of you may notice that my debt has increased by a lot, and that is something I will explain when I do my financial plan with me for 2024. There's really nothing else to say right now. I will talk about it in the next video. As for my goals down here, these three are the ones that I am actively working towards in the month. So I actually have to save certain amounts and I need to make sure that I set up my 401k pre-paycheck contributions. These other two are a little bit more passive because I'll already be taking the steps in order to pay down my debt. And these are essentially mile markers that I'm using just to see what progress I am making in a quarter. And now let's get into what my sinking funds actually are. And these are listed in order, but if for whatever reason they weren't or I wanted to change them later, Monarch allows me to do that at any point in time, so I'm not too worried. So first we have my taxes and bill sinking fund, and this is specifically for any annual expense that has a specific time frame that it needs to come out of my sinking fund. I am a big fan of reducing the amount of work that I have to do to find certain expenses, so I like to use Monarch's bill calendar in order to make it easier for myself. If you go to Monarch and the recurring tab, and then go to all merchants, if you come up here to view options, you can group by frequency and click apply. And now your expenses are grouped in time frame. So the first ones are going to be your monthly expenses. But if you keep scrolling, it breaks it down to all the ones that come out every year 
every three months, every two weeks, and every week. Now, for the purposes of setting my goals, I only needed to focus on the ones that said every year and every three months. So for Mint Mobile, I just did 8280 times four because that is the total that I would need to have. And then I added that with these four subscriptions here and then added $300 for the taxes that I like to save in March. And that is how I basically got 900. Then I have my travel sinking fund. This is for vacations and any kind of getaway. So even if I'm not necessarily traveling out of state or out of the country, I would still consider that travel because it's away from home. Then I have my emergency fund and I've already reached a thousand this year. So I am aiming for 2200 by the end of 2024 and we'll go over my amounts shortly. Then I have my moving slash house fund. The reason that I have this called moving slash house is because whenever I finish moving to wherever I'm gonna be for a while, a sinking fund for my cat Coda who is seven months old now and I realized that I do need to start planning to save for his annual deductible. He is pretty healthy but I want to be prepared just in case something comes up. Then I have my health sinking fund which is going to be mainly for medical but if it's anything for my health and wellness that is going to cost a lot of upfront money I would just pull from this fund. Gifts is pretty self-explanatory. This is going to be for birthdays, Christmas, and Valentine's Day. And then wish list and car are grayed out because I'm not pursuing those at all right now. Now we're going to jump into how much I want to contribute to each of these sinking funds. And if I double click on the formula, you'll see that it takes my goal amount, subtracts where I am, and then divides that into 12 because I want to contribute to these every single month. So because I like rounded numbers, I am going to just go through these line by line and we will talk about what I contribute. So for taxes and bills, that's going to be $75 a month. For travel, we'll round that up to $85. For the emergency fund and the moving fund, we'll do $100 each. And then for CODA, that'll be $45. Health will be $85 and gifts will be $55. So this has rounded out to $545 a month that I'll be putting in my savings. And that leaves me with $455 a month that I can put towards debt. If I come up here, you'll see that it takes whatever leftover amount is there. And the reason that I specifically added 163 is because 163 is the amount that I'm putting towards my debt right now each month going forward. I'll be able to put just over $600. So I think that is amazing. And hopefully I can make a lot of progress this year. So now we're going to start putting these sinking funds in Monarch. And the first thing we're going to do is head over to the goals page. And you'll see that I've already added most of these. The only one that I didn't add is the health one. And that is because I wanted to do that with you all from scratch so you can see how to do it. So we'll come up here to the top right and do add goals. And you wanna choose if it's a save up or a pay down type of goal. Save up is gonna be for anything that has a positive number. This is gonna be savings, investments, retirements, etc. For a pay down, this is gonna be anything with a negative balance. So this could be credit cards or student loans or a mortgage. In my case, because this is a health sinking fund, I am just going to select save up. And all of these save up goals do the exact same thing with the exception of the retirement because it allows you to add pre or post paycheck contributions, but everything else is the same. The only difference is the thumbnail image that you get when you select the image. So I'm gonna click savings and you can see here that you can add as many as you want at a time, but we just need to do one. Then we'll come down here and go to next. And here is where we are going to rename all of our goals and organize them in order of importance. So I have taxes and bills first, 
and then the travel sinking fund. I'm actually going to keep my emergency fund down here because I technically already met my thousand dollar mark and now all of my future payments to it are going to be kind of coasting on a monthly basis. And I also wanted to say that I do have two different icons going on here. So the purse icon means that it's something that I plan to spend from sooner rather than later. And then this sprout icon means it's money that I don't want to touch anytime in the near future. So let's finish organizing this. We have taxes and bills, travel, and then the moving fund, coda is next, and then health would be after that, and then we have gifts. For my moving fund, I think I'm gonna remove the amount the reason I had the amount here before is because it was something that I was aggressively pursuing, but my move has been put on hold, so I don't need to really see those numbers. And then for savings, actually, we're just gonna come here and copy and paste that, and we will rename this to health and save. Okay, I decided to go with this image for now, but I'll probably change it. But we're gonna click save make sure all of these are in the right rank this looks good to me so we're gonna hit next and here is where we're gonna set our goal targets so that would be based on my google sheet that would be these numbers in this column here and i'm just going to put those in the goals now so for taxes and bills i'm going to save 900 dollars travel will be a thousand the moving fund will be 3400 coda is 540 health is going to be 1020 and gifts is going to be 660 and then my emergency fund my investments and my retirement are all accurate so now we're going to hit next. We are going to skip adding the accounts to each sinking fund for now, but we are going to come back to that later. And I'm going to hit next. And then for the monthly savings goals, I'm going to go back to Google Sheets. That is going to be these amounts here. So for taxes and bills, that's going to be 75 a month. Travel will be 85. The moving fund will be 100. Coda will be 45. Health will be 85. And gifts will be 55. And I'm going to also add $100 for the emergency fund, but I'm not going to do anything for the invest or retirement goals because these are just placeholders for me and I am not trying to track my monthly contributions here in Monarch. So now I'm gonna hit next, and this is specifically for my retirement account. If I wanna add any pre-paycheck contributions, I put 83 because that is what I plan to contribute in 2024. And then you press next, and now it's going to do its automations. And now we have all seven of my sinking funds, including the emergency fund here, and we are good to go. Now we are going to assign the accounts. I first want to go to my accounts page and show you all that I only have these four bank accounts right now. My checking, emergency fund, moving fund, and sinking fund. You'll see that I only have one bank account for my sinking fund, and that is because I can allocate each dollar and cent within Monarch and know how much I have within each sinking fund instead of having multiple bank accounts that I then have to manage and manually transfer everything from. Just having one sinking fund account and then organizing the categories in Monarch was just the way to go for me. So we're gonna head over to the goals page and now we are going to assign that one sinking fund to all of these accounts that say assign savings accounts. So I'm gonna come up here to actions, go to edit accounts, and you'll see we have one, two, three, four, five different sinking funds that need to be linked to some kind of account so that we can track our progress. These other ones that have the outline buttons, these are already connected to my other goals. So my Acorns is connected to my investment goal, the emergency fund is connected to the emergency fund goal, so on and so forth. Let's start with the taxes and bills account. And I'm gonna click add accounts, and we're gonna scroll down to where it says sinking fund. 
Now you'll see that the amount we're working with is pretty low, but I didn't feel like waiting a few more days until I got paid. I wanted to go ahead and do this video now, but I think you all will still get the gist of how it works. So after I've selected the sinking fund, you'll see this checkbox here that says always use the entire account balance. We're going to uncheck this and now we can enter aka allocate a specific amount of this $1.26 that's here and assign it just to this taxes and bill sinking fund. So in my case, I'm gonna just put 26 cents to this for now and press done. And now we can press add accounts for travel because that's our next goal. Click add accounts, scroll down to the sinking fund and you'll see that it says we have a dollar available. And when I select the sinking fund, it has this handy little message here that says we already assigned 26 cents for the taxes and bills. And this is where the magic happens because you don't have to worry about over assigning money in between different sinking funds. Monarch keeps track of that for you and does not allow you to assign more than you actually have. So let's say for, which one is this? The travel, let's put 25 cents here. There we go. And then I'm gonna click done. The moving fund already has an account. So we're gonna go to Coda, click add account, scroll down to sinking fund, and you'll see it has already updated right here and said that there's 75 cents available. So I'm gonna click this again. And now it has the combined amount saying that 51 cents has already been saved for the taxes and bills account and the travel account. I'm just going to do another 25 cents here and press done. And we're gonna do the same thing for health. Scroll down, sinking fund, it says I have 50 cents available. We'll just do 25 cents again, click done. And then I think the gifts is the last one. Yep, scroll down, sinking fund. And it says we have 25 cents available for it. So I'm gonna leave that as is. And we'll see the remaining dollar and one cent has been assigned to my other goals. And now all of my goals are linked to a specific account and I can click done. And you'll see that that $1.26 that we had has now been distributed the way that we wanted across the different sinking funds that we have here. So I absolutely love that I can manage this within Monarch. As I said, having multiple different savings accounts with Capital One was just going to be a lot to handle, especially if I needed to make transfers. So I really appreciate that Monarch allows you to do this. The last amazing thing that I think Monarch does with those monthly contributions is that because we inputted those numbers here on the goals page, it has now imported that to the plan. So I'm gonna head over to the plan, go to the forecast, and we'll skip ahead to next year. And I'll zoom out a little bit. And if I come over here and scroll down, you'll see that it has already put our monthly contributions in here for all of our goals. And it's listed in order because we already sorted them on the goals page. So now when I do my annual budget planning for next year, I don't have to worry about manually putting in all of these numbers because Monarch already did it for me. Actually, I just realized it did not include Coda's line for some reason. <laughs> I'll check that after the video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you all found the way that Monarch handles sinking funds and savings accounts to be really helpful as you're planning for next year's savings goals. As I said before, the link to the yearly goals template will be available in the description below, as well as a link to try Monarch for free for 30 days. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Much love.